Hey there YouTube, Ice9 with another Madden Mobile video and it is Game Changer Tuesday. Last Friday was Flashback Friday. We had 10 great new players introduced. Over the weekend, EA came out with a bunch of new sets including a 99 Cam Chancellor that they have added boost to. And now on Tuesday, trying to bring life back into the game after the Super Bowl, we have a new batch of game changers. This caught me completely by surprise. Uh, game changers last year, uh, they were a really good way to boost a team, especially earlier on in the season before all the 96 plus players came out. So it was a really cool thing to run boosters, acceleration boosters, uh, speed boosters, any of the boosters that were out there. So a lot of people ran them, but at a certain point, EA didn't really update these players, add new ones, and the game changers kind of fell by the wayside one by one. One that didn't actually was a silver punter that they had last year. Forget his name, but they had a silver punter that had plus two awareness, minus one kick power, which was absolutely a no-brainer. Uh, everybody ran this guy for the awareness boost, but nobody liked that this year, but they do have a bunch of good game changers that people have been running all year. Uh, I'm running three of them still on offense. Kelsey at center for acceleration, Foster at guard, for strength boost with a minus one agility, which I've got a lot of agility boosts on the team. And then one that a lot of people run, Sammy Watkins with plus two speed and minus one catch, which is perfect to run with OBJ because OBJ basically overrides the catch nerf. So what people have been talking about all year, though, is please, EA, give us a player with a speed boost on defense and here we have them in DRC so this is not only a speed a good booster with plus two speed and if you have acceleration boosters which you which you should with this guy it's gonna offset that minus one acceleration but if you have that on your team what you have here is not only a booster, but you have a very good player. So he's 96 base stats, and you can see what he boosts up like. Uh, 99 speed, 99 acceleration, 98 man coverage, 95 zone coverage, 93 play recognition, which is extremely good. 99 jump, and the guy is six foot two. So this is... A very tall, very fast cornerback. And the problem is he is very much a cover cornerback in the mold of a Deion Sanders. He's kind of low strength, boosted up here. He's 69, but his strength is, base strength is much lower than that, obviously. And even boosted, his tackle is 50. So... Uh, that is definitely a liability, and what I worry about with the setup that I have right now is I've got two of these kind of cover, can't tackle cornerbacks out there. However, I've seen with Dion though, even though his tackle stat is not great at all, he typically does make the tackle. So usually it's not that that much of a problem and you can't argue that it's better to break up the pass or make the pick obviously in the first place than allowing the catch to take place so this is a great card it really is and we're going to go through quarterbacks in a second here but now we've got a bunch of great choices at the cornerback position so let's go ahead and get to it 96 and over cornerbacks and we've got the aging Charles Woodson card. I'm sure he'll get another card. Uh, still looks pretty good here. Uh, as you can see, compared to Sanders, the one thing that hurts this card the most is the 91 play recognition. Better zone than man coverage, So, but very fast. Pretty good card, but definitely showing its age. Final edition Gilmore card. So... 
fast, pretty good tackle, really good man coverage, play recognition is very mediocre, 90 on the card. Same with the Pac-Man card, 90 play recognition, but faster, stronger, better tackling, still a pretty good choice. The boost isn't great though, and depending on the price, not a very good deal. 98 Woodson already hovering for about a million coins, so some pretty good stats. Play recognition is good at 92. DRCs is higher, but this guy tackles a lot better. Probably a better choice for a cornerback, too, depending if you want to go with boosters or not. But some pretty solid stats, I would say. Pretty solid cornerback. Now we look at DRC as opposed to Deion Sanders on my team. There's a lot of red there, including the tackle number. Uh, but the acceleration is higher. He's a little bit stronger, and he's taller. He's six foot two. Coverage stats are very, very good. And because this guy is pullable from events and not from packs, that means he's going to be out all year. People are going to be trying to get him. And it's going to bring the price down for everybody as well. So now everybody, if they want to, could run a speed booster. And I run him at corner two. Right now I'm going to give him a shot there. Uh, I could run Night Train Lane at corner two instead. He's quite a bit more physical. But I'm going to try this guy with his speed, jump, and play recognition and see what he does. His man coverage is better, so I think he might be a better cover two than NTL. NTL at the very least I'm going to try to find him on this list but he is going to be a great player to put in the dime even until the end of the year I think. Chris Harris Jr. and when you look at these stats just extremely solid a uh, very very good player probably a better corner two per se than DRC although he is a little bit shorter and a little bit slower and the acceleration's not quite as good. That said, his play recognition is really high, so positionally this guy is going to be where he needs to be a lot of the times. Just a very solid choice at cornerback. And the Pat Peak card from the non-set combine series, only pullable from packs. This is going to make sure that in the, he's in 98 and a lot of people like Pat Peak, He's going to remain expensive, I'm afraid. Although this is looks like his price has gone down. But same speed. Uh, boost is not quite as good as DRC's, but the same speed as DRC. Uh, stats are pretty good. Play recognition's a little bit lower. The man and zone are identical. Tackle's a little bit better. So... A good choice, you could run this guy at corner two as well. The Woodson card again. And let's see who else we could find in here. Already went through the Pac-Man card. And this guy's not a really good choice. Uh, I would say his play recognition is good. And his speed is good. Everything is decent, but there's no boost. And his man is higher or is lower than his own coverage, which means he'd probably be a better nickel. But his play recognition is pretty good. A pretty solid choice. I'd expect his price to continue to drop, though. The old 96 Woodson card, his 98 is only marginally better than this card, actually. Uh, pretty solid choice is going to be a good budget quarterback for a lot of people. So here's NTL going at 1.3 million, which is the lowest I've seen him in a while. And the thing about this guy, besides his plus two strength boost, is his play is going to be better than anybody else, I think, that you could put in the dime position. The dime position is going to be out on the field contesting the tight end on third and long plays a lot of times. So this guy with the boost is going to be better than just about any safety that you could get put back there. He's extremely strong, extremely fast, and he's got 99 hit power. So this is a guy who's great with the boost, and he's great in terms of his play. And 
I could see with the number of cornerbacks that are out there, eventually most feared Dawkins is going to make its way to the sidelines, I would say. And I would rather get rid of Dawkins than this guy just because while he doesn't have a double boost like Dawkins, he, this guy's going to play better than Dawkins, no doubt about it. There's Ty Law, got a strength boost, really solid, very solid stats. Um, kind of being outmoded a little bit. This is about what I sold him for uh, once I got DRC. I sold him for 525,000 coins, I believe. And so we've got a lot of cornerbacks now. A lot of cornerbacks. And only one true 99, and that's the boss version of Woodson. Let's see how many of them are out there. There's quite a few of them out there. And one was going for under 3 million. Again, almost in the realm of affordability, uh, really good coverage stats, great player, but not going to be able to be afforded by most people. And even though he's a boss player and he's the first 99 cornerback in the game, you could see how many of them are up there, and they're not really moving at this point. So that's that. We're going to go on to our next position here. And we've got ourselves another, another 98 center in Travis Frederick. And this is good news because Jeff Saturday uh, was only pullable from packs out of the Super Bowl event. And he was extremely rare. And now we've got a guy with better stats. 96 pass block, 98 run block, 99 impact block. That without a doubt is the best stats I've seen out of the center in my two years now playing this game. So really good stats. Uh, not a bad boost. Plus two awareness for a minus one strength is a good trade-off when you got a lot of strength boosters and need a little bit of help in terms of the awareness. So really great choice here. And next one, I might as well go ahead and show him on my team. I picked up another flashback for the boost running in the 3-4 and the thing is with this guy he's got 95 play recognition it's extremely high uh, speed boosts up decent uh, tackle numbers are good coverage numbers especially combined with the play recognition are good so this is a real solid choice and the reason I got yet another strength booster on my team is because eventually this guy is going to fall off my team and because Foster is eventually going to be replaced as well. So once those two guys come off the idea is these guys have the same boost and take away uh, plus two strength for a minus one agility. I could run two of them and still be okay because I've got Barry. And then on defense, I've got Mean Joe Green, who's not going anywhere. He's going to boost agility all year. I'm going to keep him all year for sure. And then also Atwater provides a boost as well, although I'll get into the strong safety position in a while. But so with the game changers as long as you have for example DRC takes away minus one acceleration so I've got two players that boost acceleration I've got Julius Peppers who's getting a little long in the tooth but he's still on my team he still boosts it up nice it's still a 102 defense with him so I keep him for the time being but one thing I could see as being a problem is eventually this guy is going to be outmoded as well. And then I'm going to need this acceleration at least to counteract DRC's uh, nerf on acceleration. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do that in the future. But that's basically how playing a bunch of boosters and game changers works. Uh, you get... A plus two in one stat make sure it's an important one we'll go through a player in just a little bit where 
the stat is just opposite of what it should be. Even though he's a pretty good looking linebacker. Make sure I spell his name right. Don't think I am there. Oh, I did. Okay, so plus two tackle for minus one acceleration. It's not a good trade-off from a boost point of view at all. Uh, and the reason why, even though it's giving you plus two in one number, and that affects all the players on the team, the thing you got to look at is tackle only affects defensive players, but acceleration affects everybody on the team. So this isn't a good trade-off, but look at these stats. I mean, he's got coverage stats that are like Super Bowl Brooks. It's absolutely amazing. 99 pursuit, 93 tackle, which is not bad. 95 speed, unbelievable speed in this guy. He is six foot one, and so I don't know how much of a difference he would make covering a Gronk or something like that. But he does have 85 play recognition, which is unfortunate. Um, strength's a little low. That's not too bad, though, if you've got this guy in the 3-4 or something like that. Pretty good coverage linebacker. 96 zone. Wow, that's higher than most safeties. So pretty good card there. And let's move on to our next one. Yet another 98 safety. And so we're going to take a look at all these guys together. Here's the Chancellor card. And we can see we might as well talk about it now. They have added a boost to the card. Uh, plus one tackle, plus one zone. So it's not a great boost, but it's all that you need on this card now. Everybody should be trying to do this set. I think that was EA's intention. Try to get some of the old cards out of the game. And this is a set over a long period of time, over a short period of time. You should be working on the Cam Chancellor set for sure. All right, so there's Bird. Really good free safety. A lot of ad reads making its way onto the market. And here we go with Weddle. And this is a, uh, I don't know about this boost. <laughs> plus two zone, minus one man. Uh, I guess it's a plus. Uh, you got to look at the gameplay of this guy to really see if he's going to be somebody that you want to have. Let's look at the all-important play recognition. It is 90, which is extremely high. So not real fast. Um, this is more of a free safety type of thing. Not a great boost, but it is another 98 safety for sure. I think I'd rather have Bird, though. Because it gives you plus one zone without taking away any man coverage. And his stats are a little bit better than Weddle's, I do believe. Alright, so there we go with safeties. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the players, but there's a Brandon Boykin card. And let me see the boost of this. Plus two jump for minus one strength. Uh, some people like the jump boost a lot. I could really care less. Uh, but it'll boost himself to 99 jump. Uh, 94 speed, not very strong at 55. Let's go ahead and show the cards. Might as well. Because this guy is going to be less expensive. And the boosts are not terrible. This is probably a better guy to play in the nickel. 89 play recognition is kind of low, though. Uh, so not a great card, but he'll be coming down in price, and he's going to be affordable for a lot of people. All right, so we've got a quarterback in the mix here. Tony Romo and let's take a look at his stats this is actually my first time looking at the stats and wow it looks like he's kind of expensive 600,000 being the cheapest of the cards not too fast um, I forget what his height is too but he's not very tall I don't think um, this doesn't look very exciting 
plus two awareness for a minus one elusiveness. So this is going to be a good one for budget teams or Tony Romo fans, but I don't see anything here that's really, really exciting about this card. But apparently somebody is excited because it's still going for 600,000 coins. All right. Jordy Nelson card, and this is awesome because none of these cards were 96s in the Game Changer program last year. Not that I remember. So we've got a Jordy Nelson card, and for the people who have OBJ, this boost is terrible. Absolutely terrible. But he boosts himself up to 100 catch, which isn't bad. Speed's not bad. Strength isn't bad. Not a bad card. All in all, probably a good slot receiver. Not the tallest guy, so I don't know if I'd put him. Probably wouldn't be a real good jump ball receiver or anything like that, but not a bad card. And again, another good one to have for people with budget teams. Looks like he's still pretty expensive, hovering at over half a million coins. And yet another running back. Actually, two of them. Got a new AP card as well. Always forget the second A. And so, kind of funny. He had a finesse back with a strength boost, but that's exactly what he has. 97 speed. That's pretty quick. Good catch numbers. Very elusive. Um, should be a really good catching elusive back. Kind of a... Poor man CJ2K, I guess you could say. Not too bad. Um, I still wouldn't take him over Emmett Smith. Let's look at the Adrian Peterson card. And, and kind of a... I don't know about that boost... Agility for taking away strength doesn't like, look like it makes a lot of sense. And even though he's in 98, there's a lot of red as compared to uh, uh, Tier 7 Emmett. Less elusive, carry numbers lower, catch is extremely low on this guy. I would not want to throw this guy the football at all. Even though he's a big guy, that might make a difference. But that does sometimes make a difference. The bigger target is a wide receiver, but... Nothing too exciting. That's maybe the least exciting 98 card I've ever seen, to be honest with you. But he is a 98. Not everybody has Emmett, so it looks like he's going around a million coins. So that's pretty much it. I don't know how many more of these guys I want to cover. Uh, there's a Gary Barnage card. This is another tight end. That's kind of a non-starter for me. There's one guy at that position, and the other two, or the, the, the slot is usually resided by a booster. Perfectly happy with OBJ there. Julio Jones card looks pretty decent. 97 catch will boost up there. Uh, catch and traffic's 94. And the boost is plus two agility, minus one awareness, which is... One of those boosts that doesn't make sense. Carlos Dunlap. So we've got another 96 defensive end. Actually, let's look at his stats. Because we don't have too many 96 plus defensive ends in this game. So let's do a comparison of all these guys. So we've got the Freeney card already going for less than three quarters of a million. Wow. So, plus two awareness at minus one acceleration. Not the most exciting boost. If there's anything that you want for minus one acceleration, you want speed, in my opinion. The most desirable uh, boost in the game is speed and awareness. Speed and awareness. So, uh, I don't know if... That's not a good trade-off. I don't know how excited I am about this card. Looks like a pretty good card, I guess. Hit power's not really high. Tackle's good. More of a finesse 
uh, defensive end, but he's not real quick. So I don't know how he'll work out as a player. This guy looks pretty good. Charles Johnson. Numbers are pretty good for defensive end. Deacon Jones is probably the best deal that you could get in a defensive end right now, 96 and above. The stats aren't great, but it's not terrible either. More of a power defensive end. Reggie White card's coming down in price. And actually, I haven't checked this card out, so I might as well. And nothing too exciting about that card with no boost. Stray hand card. I've seen it going for a million coins. Justin Tuck, not real high hit power, which is always the problem with his cards, but pretty solid. The two numbers, though, that are can be boosted the most easily are already high, which is kind of a problem with the card. Block shed's usually not too high in his cards either. And let's see. Here's Honors Watt. And just because of rarity, Honors kind of came and went before we knew it. And pretty good choice. It's a power defense event. Only thing being, if you could get into him at any kind of reasonable price, which is a problem. Because he was a limited time only type of thing. I saw this guy going today for a million coins, which is excellent. I've really liked Jason Taylor on my team. Pretty awesome. Golston, uh, this guy, I would love to get this guy, uh, not just for the boost, but because he looks like a really good power defensive end, but he's been, just been priced out of reach because he was a non-set combine player. So that's kind of, oh, there's Bruce Smith, just sold at 2 million coins, so he's still going for that. Which is kind of surprising. That's a lot of coins. And that's pretty much it. So that is a very long video. And that's all I'm going to go through today. In addition they've got a Carlos Dunlap card. There is. I already went through the Dunlap card. There's a couple others. Dion Buchanan at linebacker. Went through him already. There's a defensive tackle, not too exciting. So that is it. I just want to make sure I cover everything. I always seem to miss something, but I covered everything that I wanted to. Uh, might as well go through the league season tournament as well. We are now 10 and 2. And we've had some easy games, and it has been concern confirmed I saw the post from EA where they know that teams were reducing their overalls to try to get easier matchups so EA handled it and they now overall is no longer part of the sorting process when the matchmaking process when they're trying to set up new tourneys when you've got two leagues looking for a new tourney so it's not a factor anymore uh, it's been unfortunate from some points of view because we've had some blowouts and you know I think that it'd be more fair if it was more uh, competition of our league's level which I don't think we're a top tier league but I, I think we're a pretty good one so we've been blowing some leagues out now the last four games now we've been blowing leagues out so but it was the only right thing to do um, when you've got teams like ourselves who aren't doing anything funny, we're not force closing, we're not lowering our overalls. It's only fair to put us up with any other league out there. That's probably the right way to do it because you had teams that were lowering their overalls in order to get easier matches, and that's definitely not right. So that is my long video for the day. Thanks for watching. Always remember Papa Raider. Aiden Sapphire and Ryan, they are in my YouTube subscriptions as well. Thanks for watching.